now we will study electric field due to charge which is distributed in a sphere this sphere is a non conducting sphere so whenever the particles of the sphere gets charged the charge cannot come to the surface why it wants to come to surface due to repulsion but the material of the sphere do not allow them to move it's a non conductor so if it is a non conductor sphere the charge we assume that charge is distributed all over the body and for this there is a volumetric distribution and we will say that there is a volumetric charge density volumetric charge density and that is rho per unit volume everywhere now again we divide it three sections let us say this is the center this is capital r and here we have outside there is a point at total distance r this is a variable distance and this distance we will either increase or decrease to any point okay here is the point p and we want to find out electric field here so those of you who have attended previous lecture of this for shell outside e there was a procedure i should not repeat that procedure but in short i will do that from at p we draw a gaussian surface this is the gaussian surface and it has got radius r so integration e ds is equal to q upon epsilon not is the gauss theorem for which we are going to from which we are going to take help okay so here we have already done that the complete thing is to be repeated you can see that lecture once again and what do we find e outside at any point which is outside is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q upon r square no change no different derivation same derivation every word is same now when we go on decreasing this r this will attain a value of r when the point p is here at that time r has become minimum and this will be e on the surface this is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q upon r square i won't say minimum because this r can will go up to 0 but this is a particular value on the surface now this r is smaller than this r therefore this e is larger than this e so e goes on increasing towards the surface okay now once we go inside it that is something very peculiar which you are supposed to learn and that is a bit difficult also for that i will change it okay and we will do the derivation once again now okay this is a very small circle you will not be able to see so i will make a larger one let us see there is a charged sphere and that charged sphere is this large okay this is r and there is charge distributed all over it and it has got a volumetric charge density that volumetric charge density is rho volumetric charge density okay we have a point here and that point is at a distance which is less than radius r okay so this is all charges are filled up Hmm. Now we have a point P which is now inside it at this location, and we have to find out this location is at a certain distance. This distance is R, and we have to find out electric field here. For this purpose, we again start our derivation with help of Gauss theorem. Okay, what was the step number one? 
step number one was to establish a Gaussian surface. Here we make a Gaussian surface which is same like that a concentric sphere. This is a concentric sphere and this has got radius small r. So Gaussian surface step one a concentric sphere radius r. Okay. Now in this E at every point is symmetrical and theta at every point is 0. These two explanation we have already done in case of shell. So these two will apply here also. For that if you don't understand it see the previous lectures where I have explained it. Now if okay theta is 0 is symmetrical now this is our Gaussian surface the red one. The next thing we have to take closed integral EDS second point closed integral EDS cos theta is equal to E closed integral of ds and cos theta is equal to cos 0 is equal to 1. E is uniform constant because this distance is constant. So that is constant is taken out and we have to do closed integration of d, ds area. Now if all the area is integrated then we get the total area of the sphere and it becomes 4 pi r square. Okay, so far so good. So this is we have done EDS cos theta that one derivation is done. The second derivation is more important and what is that? This Q. What Q is this? This is the Q which is inside the enclosed surface. Here the charge we have given to this is we will change Q, capital Q is the total charge given to this. Now, can you tell me whether this complete charge Q is inside our Gaussian surface? Answer is no. So many charges are outside and so many charges are inside. According to Gauss, which charges are responsible to make electric field on the surface? Answer only those charges which are inside the surface, not outside. Whatever is the amount of charges outside the surface will not affect electric field inside the Gaussian surface. Remember this. Sometimes it looks awkward. So many charges will not create any electric field? Answer no. They will create electric field but positive and negative in the same amount and cancel out and the resultant E is 0. But resultant E is 0. So all these charges do not have any net electric field inside. So net electric field inside is only due to the charges which are inside it. So we want this Q value, how much is the charge inside it that we want to find out. How do we find it out? Very simple, we have been given a quantity that per unit volume it is rho. We will find out the volume of this multiplied with the rho that will give the charges inside the sphere. So how much is the volume of this? sphere. Volume of this sphere Q. We want to calculate Q. Small Q this time I have reserved for those charges which are inside it. The total charges I have kept as capital Q. So you don't get confused. Q that is in. This is volume 4 upon 3 pi r Q and per unit volume charges rho. So the total charge is this inside this. Done. This is value of Q. Now putting values closed integral EDS had come equal to E into 4 pi r square is equal to Q. Q is equal to 4 upon 3 pi r cube into rho upon epsilon naught upon 
epsilon naught. Okay, now exclude E. So E is equal to 4 pi, 4 pi r square. So this is 3 will go down. E is equal to r into rho upon 3 epsilon naught. Rho upon 3 epsilon naught into r. This is electric field inside it. Now this is a constant term or a variable term. Answer this is a variable term. Why? r is a variable distance. If we are at 1 centimeter, it has value 1. If we are at 3 centimeter, it has value 3. E will change. That means E keeps on changing with distance. This gives us E is proportionate to R and both have got power 1. That means there is a linear relation between the two. If R is 2 times, E is 2 times. If R is 10 times, E is 10 times. So, R increases, E goes on increasing but up to which point? Answer is up to surface because once it reaches the surface, another formula takes over. That takes place and for outside, another formula takes over. So, this is relation is only for inside. If you want to convert it in respect to capital Q, uh, you can always do that because you know that Q is equal to 4 upon 3 pi r cube multiplied by rho. So find the value of rho from here, put that value here. Then what will you have? Q and r cube. But generally we don't use that, that is not of much use to us. You, but you can always convert it into Q and capital R, right. So this is our formula for this, it is for this, it is for this. You see one very strange thing, E outside and R, E is proportionate to 1 upon R square. On the surface, E constant because R has a constant value. And this constant is what? Maximum value. And E inside is E is proportionate to, directly proportionate to R. So, these are the changes of E. So, what happens here? Outside, when the distance decrease, E goes on increasing, increasing, increase maximum. Now, inside, when R is decreasing, E is also decreasing, R is decreasing, E is decreasing, decreasing, decreasing and when R becomes 0, E will also become 0. So at the center, E is how much? 0. It goes on increasing up to surface and after that again goes on decreasing. If you don't keep it, you don't remember it, we can always make a graph of this and see that graph is very again. It is interesting like you have done in previous case and now we make a graph for change of electric field with reference to the distance. We start from the center of the sphere. So at the sphere center electric field is 0, we get this point. This is 0, 0. 0 for distance, 0 for electric field. Okay. Now we are increasing the distance in this direction and the moment R increases, E also increases. This does not remain 0. It goes on increasing, increasing, increasing and finally reaches the maximum value when the distance is R. So that means we get a point over here, here somewhere. Okay. So at this point, at distance R, this is the maximum value and from this point to this point there is a linear chain. Linear chain is represented by a straight line. So I put a straight line. This is the graph for E 
is proportionate to R and where is this? This is inside. This is on surface. This is outside. And what is the relation outside? This is the relation outside. So for sphere, outside relation is same. That is E is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught Q upon R square. On the surface it is same 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught Q upon R square. If you want you can put it capital Q does not matter. 3 inside, inside the sphere. E is equal to, you have just done it, 3 epsilon naught rho into R. Here rho is volumetric density of charge which is a constant, 3 is a constant, epsilon naught is a constant. So E is directly proportionate to R. Here we have done it, E is directly proportionate to R which will give a straight or linear relation. But when we come to outside, we find E is directly proportionate to R square as was in the case of shell. So the graph will also appear like that. Like this. And this shows E is proportionate to 1 upon R square. So this is our graph for graph for charged sphere which is non-conducting E versus R. And now you have understood this meaning. And uh, with this we have done all the things in Gauss theorem. So Gauss theorem all derivations are done. Electric field all derivations are done. And now we will go for a new topic that will be topic of a potential, introduction of a potential which is very very vital and important because what you are using, you have got a battery. The first thing you ask about battery, how much voltage? It is a 12 volt battery, it is a 6 volt battery, 3 volt battery. Whenever you get a bulb, you ask on which voltage it runs? 220 volt, 12 volt, 6 volt, 1.5 volt. So, this volt is a very important and common word in our life. So this is very important to learn what is the basic fundamental meaning of potential which has got the unit volt. That we will do in the next lecture.